Did that really just happen? I, I think I'm dreaming. That's, that's what's going on right now. I'm dreaming, and now I'm specifically dreaming that I'm doing a review of what I just dreamed. Or this is actually happening. I admire the guts. I admire the just the boldness to kill off one of your main characters of the show. I really do admire it. And not not even, you know, Carter Carter could re re reborn, rebirth, whatever. Whatever you want to call it. He re regenerates kind of. He gets reborn. So killing him off is like, it's okay, he'll come back. To kill off Leonard Snart takes some real cojones. However, you do realize you just got rid of the best villain you've got in this entire Arrowverse, right? Like, they do realize that. Unless it's just my opinion... I assume people have the same opinion. He's an awesome villain. He's an awesome bad guy. Not only because he has a bit of a good side to him, so he's not completely evil, but just he's a great character. And he's gone now. I mean, whenever whenever Rip had the vision of Ray getting blown up, I thought to myself, okay, Ray is safe, <laughs> you know? It, it felt like something they were trying to throw in there, like, oh, it's Ray's destiny that he's going to die by this. And I was like, no, no, it's not going to be Ray. Somebody else is going to step in and stop him. You know, it just, it seemed like what this show was trying to do. You know, the whole destiny thing. They were trying to throw a wrench into that destiny plan, which made sense. So when Mick Rory knocks him out, I'm thinking, okay. So now Mick gets to get his revenge on the people that brainwashed him. It's a good end for him. And then Snark goes in. I'm thinking, no. No, they're not about to do this. Knocks Mick out. I'm like, no, you can't do this. And then the guys show up, and he's gone. And it's... The thing is, with these shows, the possibility of him coming back... It's it's more possible than if he were in another show. You know, if there were another show and an explosion happened, and he would be gone for sure. But because these Arrowverse shows, they love to kill characters. He may come back in some way, form, or fashion. You know, whether it's by killing Vandal Savage, it resets the timeline to where none of this even happens, or something along those lines, or you know, the explosion knocks him into a different time, or. I don't know. They could probably work it to where they could bring him back. But it's probably the most conclusive death that I've seen on this show. Uh, not not just this show. Of the three shows, like you think about the deaths of main characters. There have been a few that is like, okay, yeah, they're dead. But they could come back. You know, when Sarah died in Arrow. Um, it was like, yeah, but she's part of the League of Assassins, and they, you know, they can bring their characters back. So, this one definitely seems like the most conclusive death, because it's very hard to survive an explosion. <laughs> um, but I don't know, it's just kind of disappointing that he's gone now. I think I talked about this before, but there's a friend of mine that um, has been watching Arrow and the Flash the same time that I have. And uh, she hasn't been able to watch Legends of Tomorrow, but her favorite character is Captain Cold. Um, not necessarily for the same reason that he's my favorite character on the show. But, you know, she she loves him, and it's going to be very disappointing for her when she gets to this episode, when she finally gets around to watching it. Anyway, so, yeah, as far as my opinions on that choice, it's bold. I'm just... I'm sad that it had to be him. You know, it's it's one of those characters that you don't want to see go. Um, but in the end, it it kind of makes sense that he's not going to let Mick sacrifice himself. You know, he's he already let 
Mick go one time and look at what happened to him. He became Kronos. So he feels like he kind of owes him. Uh, so yeah, it does make sense that he would kind of rectify that by uh, taking Mick's place. However, I will say the one great thing about this is that he went out like a badass. I mean, surrounded. Every, everybody's got guns pointed at him. The guy's like, stop it now. Shut it down. He's like, there are no more strings on me. And then the explosion. It was... It was a very emotional and just badass moment for Snart. So that was that was the one good thing out of all of this. We got that scene. Um, so yeah, as far as the episode in all though, it was really really good. Uh, we got a little bit of a twist in this uh, after the twist from last week, where we found out that the Time Masters were actually working with Vandal Savage, which. I was kind of hoping they would do, and they did. We actually find out even more of a twist this week that the Time Masters have been using this Oculus to actually control their movements through time. So the entire time, whenever they are, you know, they're they're moving through time, they're doing these little things here and there. I, I was wondering, you know, okay, so they're whenever we were going to these different timelines, I'm thinking, okay, so they're going to here because it's the best next move for them. And they're going here because it's the best next place to stop Vandal Savage. No. The Time Masters the entire time were controlling their movements, making them go to different places, you know, influencing their thoughts to make them go here to stop Vandal Savage from being, you know, put in jail or something over here. It's really, really, really freaking clever when you really think about it. You know, when you think about, I don't know, it's crazy to really consider it all. You know? Like, even the, um, the, the one lady, the, what's her name? Crap. The Pilgrim, I think she was called. The one that went back in time to try to kill their younger selves to erase them from time. Even that was part of their major plan. And they knew that they were going to be able to stop this woman and in turn, it would affect them, <laughs> you know, doing all of it. It's crazy. And it's a brilliant twist. It really is. To think about all of the stuff that they had to do to put in place to get Vandal Savage to where he needed to be because they think that he's the only one that can stop this alien attack in 21-whatever. You know, like, after he takes over the world, these aliens attack, and they believe that he's the only one that can stop them. Which Rip Hunter says is complete BS, but... You know, I don't know, and it's kind of interesting to see who's right and who's wrong. You know, it could be either one of them is uh, wrong here, but uh, we end up with a very good episode, a good escape plan set in place by uh, Captain Cold and Sarah. Um, they managed to get all of, all the stuff you know set in place, the ship taken out, the uh, all the other ships like shut down. They break out everybody from their prison. And, yeah, overall, there are a few moments that really stood out. The rest of it was just genuine good stuff. You know, like, it, it's really hard to pick out that many moments, but the ones that I can pick out are really good. You know, the one scene with uh, Snart and Sarah in the room, you know, he brings in the car, she's like, I'm not in the mood. And they kind of throw a little bit of a hint of a romance in there. The reason I like this is because we haven't really gotten that this season with them. You know, we had the whole romance thing with Ray and Kendra. I talked about how it was the weakest part of the show for me. They've had sort of, Snart and Sarah have had kind of a friendship, kind of an understanding of each other, uh, where nobody else on the ship could really understand them that way. Especially whenever Mick was off the team for a little bit. Sarah was the only one that really understood who Snart was, you know, because Mick wasn't there anymore. So it's kind of interesting to see that even though they never really set up a romance, there was a little bit of it there. And right at the end, you know, we we have this moment where Snart's like, "Look, you know, this could be our last time together," and he he tells her, "You know, I wanted to get to know more about you," and she's just like, "Please back off, son." Uh, which, of course, comes full circle whenever he's going to sacrifice himself. She ends up 
admitting kind of how she felt about him. Um, so it was just, it was very nice. It was very subtle. They didn't really have to throw it in our faces a lot. It was there, though. Uh, and I like how they set that up. Uh, another good moment is with Mick Rory possibly turning back into Kronos and then doesn't turn into Kronos, uh, ends up turning on the guy, shooting him, and then smashing his head in with his foot, which is pretty cool. Um, but he... I like his reasoning whenever he's talking to Ray after it. You know, he was talking about how they tried to change him, but they didn't because he was so set on vengeance. Now, he's actually thinking about the team. That was the one thing he's managed to focus on to keep from being brainwashed. I like that. I like the fact that he's becoming an actual character now. He's not just, oh, I like to watch stuff burn. You know, that was his whole thing. He, he didn't come along to save the world. He didn't come along for the fame and glory. He didn't come along for being a hero or anything like that. He just wanted to blow stuff up. That was the only reason he was on this mission. Now he's actually a character. Now he's got a lot of depth to his character now. I, I like that. I like the fact that they managed to change that about him. So that was really nice. Um, and then after Snart sacrifices himself and they are heading, heading away... There are several just really emotional moments between them all. You know, I, it, it was a very emotional ending to this episode. You've got Sarah who's on the verge of tears. You've got Mick who doesn't want to talk to anybody. Ray comes in to console him. And he's just like, you know, get out. I don't want to talk to you. And then Ray manages to convince him, look, what if we managed to kill Vandal Savage? You know, he's got Kendra. He, he's talking about... I. I even though Snart's gone, I still feel like I want to kill somebody for him. And Ray's like, well, Sav Savage has Kendall and Kendra and Carter. He's like, that'll do. So I like the fact that now he's kind of got a purpose uh, to go kill Vandal Savage. The scene with Rip Hunter, you, you can see during this whole thing that they're doing, um, inside of the, the vanishing point, you know, taking on all these bad guys, during that time, Vandal Savage has gone back to 2166 and kills his wife and son. And so he goes, he gets on the the thing with Gideon and asks her, what does the timeline look like? She's like, there is no timeline anymore. You know, the Oculus, with the Oculus down, I can't look at that. He says, can you at least check and see what happened to 2166? She says, I'm sorry, Captain Hunter, it looks like Vandal Savage... According to the newspapers, Vandal Savage has killed uh, your wife and son. And just that realization that after all this time, you know, it, the whole point of this mission was he was trying to save his wife and son. It turns out that the Time Master sent Vandal Savage to kill his wife and son so he would go on this mission. And he just, in the end, he can't stop it. You know, in the end, it still happens. It is kind of a depressing thought. You know, after all this time, the one reason he got this team together, he failed in that mission. And obviously, you know, the goal now will be to get back Kendra and Carter and to kill Vandal Savage in the process because, you know, we need to stop him from taking over the world completely. Uh, but then again, it's like, well, I don't know. How, where, where are you going to go from here? How are you going to do this now? You can't go back in time and kill him, can you? Or are you going to just go find Kendra and Carter where, you know, wherever they are? It's very interesting to see how they're going to end this. And hopefully they don't do what most, uh, if you think about most time travel movies and TV shows, most of them end on a note of, they end up stopping whatever, but the time stream is messed up, and then something just fixes everything. You know, it's kind of like a deus ex machina. Like, for some reason, oh, everything's good now. You know, I hope they don't do that. Uh, one, of the, one of the best examples I can think of, and this is spoilers for uh, Edge of Tomorrow, Live, Die, Repeat, whatever you want to call it, the action movie with Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. It was a great movie. Really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Kind of like Groundhog Day with aliens and explosions. A lot of fun. But at the end, you you kill all the you kill the main monster, and everybody's dead. You know they all sacrifice themselves to do it. 
And then for some reason, the day resets again. And Tom Cruise's character is completely fine. It's all reset to before the battle even starts. Everybody's still alive. It's like, really? You're just going to completely wipe away all of the emotion with that? Just, oh, everything's good now. Um, I don't know. It was It was a little bit disappointing. So I hope they don't do that with this. You know, when you think about snart sacrifice when you think about everything they've gone through you know rip hunter possibly losing his wife and son trying to stop the time masters from you know affecting the timeline anymore all the sacrifices they've given would just mean nothing at all if at the end of it all it's just oh we do this one thing and time resets and we're all good now i hope they don't do that that would really take a lot of the emotional impact out of it um, as much as I would love to see Snart still be alive at the end of this, that would probably be the biggest cop out they could do, and I don't, I don't think they're gonna do that. DC, these DC shows, the Arrowverse shows, have done a very good job of not really copping out of a lot of emotional moments. Like, you know, when in Arrow, whenever the city is getting attacked, it's actually getting attacked. It's not, oh, we stopped the big thing that was attacking before it attacked. No, for the most part, you, know, you think about season one. It got attacked. It got destroyed. Several hundred people died. Um, so I don't see them copping out of this one saying, oh, they're all still alive. But at the same time, it's still a possibility. Just crossing my fingers and hoping. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on this episode. Next week's finale. Really excited. Can't wait to see what they're going to do. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. What do you want to see them do? What do you think they're going to do? All that good stuff. Uh, if there's anything I missed in this episode that you want to talk about, let me know. We can talk about it. Leave a like and subscribe for more Legends of Tomorrow, and I'll see you at the next review. Peace out.